On Wednesday, the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities heard highly anticipated testimony from Pentagon officials about a phenomenon that has been a source of public intrigue for generations, unidentified flying objects. There were no photographs of flying saucers or extraterrestrials hauled in as witnesses, but the Department of Defense did say it is reviewing hundreds of incidents of pilots coming across something in the sky they just could not account for. So how does the government explain those UFOs and is there other life out there? NBC's Kathy Park has our Sunday Focus. For generations, our fascination with UFOs and aliens have fueled hit TV shows like X-Files, iconic films, ET phone home, and comedy sketches. They were uh, gray with big fat eyes, little mouths. But for some real life pilots, it's not a satellite, it's not a meteor. Mysterious objects they've recently spotted in the skies are proving that truth is stranger than fiction. There's nothing that flies that high. So the odds of it being a military aircraft doing high G loads like that is impossible. It's either artificial or biological. A Pew Research Center survey shows two thirds of Americans believe intelligent life exists on other planets and more unexplainable sightings are adding to the growing push for answers from the U.S. government. We cannot keep turning a blind eye to surveillance data that is critical to detecting and tracking UAP. This week on Capitol Hill, the top Pentagon official reviewing unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, says they're investigating roughly 650 cases. That's up from more than 500 reported at the beginning of the year. The majority of unidentified objects reported to Aero demonstrate mundane characteristics of balloons, unmanned aerial systems, clutter, natural phenomena, or other readily explainable sources. Oh, splash, splash. And so far, no proof any of them are aliens. But with a team of researchers, Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb is leading on science to dig deeper. Even if we have a million fuzzy images from cell phone cameras, they are not equivalent to one crisp image with high resolution from a well-calibrated scientific instrument. Loeb is planning an expedition to Papua New Guinea this summer to search for what he thinks may be an interstellar object that crashed down there in 2014. Finding evidence for extraterrestrial technologies uh, could provide us with a glimpse at our technological future because that would be the biggest discovery that humanity ever made if we happen not to be alone in our cosmic neighborhood. And even if space aliens aren't coming to us, we're taking big steps to rocket into outer space ourselves. SpaceX pushing the limits this week, launching its most powerful rocket ever built. Except shortly after liftoff, the uncrewed craft exploded. Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly. SpaceX founder Elon Musk still calling it a success. And earlier this month, ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. NASA introduced the four astronauts who hope to return to lunar orbit next year, paving a way for an eventual return to the moon. We need to be better to each other and to our planet, and I hope this mission can, can inspire more of that. And Kathy joins me now from New York. Kathy, good morning. So clearly from these hearings, the Pentagon is taking UFOs seriously. So how will the government continue to track them? Hey, Willie, good morning to you. Yeah, NASA is also exploring the solar system and beyond, looking for extraterrestrial life. With the renewed interest in UAPs last year, NASA commissioned an independent study largely focused on aerial phenomena. The goal is to come up with ways to inform the agency and what data can be collected in the future from both government and civilian entities in order to shed light on these UAPs and whether any could be an issue for national security or air safety. The study is expected to wrap up midsummer and will be released to the public. Willie? We are not alone. <laughs> Kathy Park, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.